einen guten Morgen in den Chat. Guten Morgen an alle Teilnehmer. Äh, wir sind jetzt 73 Teilnehmer. Wir fangen an, wir haben, weil wir haben ein starkes Programm. Ich habe heute zwei fantastische Gäste, äh, den Jaromir Kasper aus äh, Tschechien. Ähm, er ist Premier, Premier Field Engineer und den Wladimir Mach. Ähm, auch so nehme ich an aus Tschechien, auch Premier Field Engineer. Ich hoffe, das ist richtig, äh, ihr beiden. Ähm, wir werden uns heute äh, WS Lab vorstellen, eine super coole Skriptsammlung, mit der man unheimlich viele Szenarien bauen kann, über 50. Ähm, die beiden betreuen diese Skriptsammlung und äh, bauen die und deswegen äh, jetzt noch kurz Zwei Dinge. Das nächste Webinar machen wir jetzt direkt und äh, ich habe noch eine kleine Promo und dann gehen wir direkt in Demo, Demo, Demo und ich gebe den Bildschirm äh, rüber zu Jaromir und Wladimir. Okay, ähm, das nächste Webinar, was wir haben werden, ist am 3. Juli äh, 2020 nachmittags. Ähm, es kann auch sein, dass das auf vormittags geschoben wird. Das hängt damit zusammen, ob der Powerkurs, den ich gleich promote, stattfindet oder nicht. Ich habe Bernhard Frank von Microsoft zu Gast und er wird uns Windows äh, Virtual Desktop in Azure vorstellen. Es gibt ja einen riesen Hype um das Thema und äh, Bernhard äh, ist Cloud, äh, ja, jetzt fehlt mir der Titel, aber er ist bei Microsoft einer dieser cloud äh, Promoter sozusagen. Ich kenne den Bernhard sehr lange. Wir haben zusammen IT-Camps gemacht. Wir kennen uns fast zehn Jahre ähm, und er macht das sehr technisch und er wird uns das Thema äh, Windows äh, Virtual Desktop vorstellen. Da freue ich mich schon sehr drauf. Und dann noch eine kurze Promotion für unseren nächsten Hyper-V Power Kurs. Ich habe mich entschieden, die Kurse jetzt hybrid durchzuführen wegen der momentanen Pandemie. Das heißt, ihr könnt präsent sein hier in Hallenberg an dem Kurs und ich werde aber auch gleichzeitig den Kurs über Teams streamen und wir haben ein äh, Webinar Special, wenn ihr noch teilnehmen wollt, vom 29.06. bis zum 3.07. Ähm, dann äh, kriegt ihr das zu einem Special Preis für 1999 Euro. Und jetzt gehen wir direkt in die Demos. Ähm, Wladimir, nein, Jaromir hat mich noch mal gebeten, dass ihr Fragen stellt. Fragen könnt ihr in Deutsch stellen oder in Englisch im Fragenbereich. Äh, wir haben hier keinen Live- Fragenmöglichkeit, wir sind nicht bei Teams. Ähm, einfach Fragen schicken und äh, in Deutsch oder in Englisch und ich werde, wenn sie in Deutsch sind, sie natürlich übersetzen und äh, Jaromir und Wladimir fragen. Wenn sie in Englisch sind, werde ich äh, versuchen, eu eu eure Fragen natürlich direkt durchzureichen. So, without further ado, I switch to English now and uh, we will get Jaromir promoted as a presenter. So we We'll switch over the screen to Jaromir now. Jaromir, can I, okay. you can hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. I even understand German. So if anyone will just send a, um, into the chat something in the German language, I will hopefully understand. And um, please let me know if you see my screen. Uh, you should see a web page with WSLab. I I see it, Jaromir. But what is with That's our correct. attendees? Can you see the screen, please? In the yes. Good. Yeah. One more thing, Karsten, can you just resend an invitation to the Vladimir? Because uh, he didn't receive it yet, I guess. I will Not do yet. that. Anyway. I, I will do anyway. that. Anyway, so let me start. Uh, and I hope this will be like an interactive conversation between me and Karsten. And I hope he'll be asking me questions because usually I'm used to talk about it but maybe sometimes because I'm talking about this all so many times and many things are for me obvious but sometimes something is not too obvious for the new people right so what this is uh, WSLAP is a bunch of scripts and it sounds really scary for the people like a script I don't want to script I want to click uh, but I did these scripts when I didn't know scripting so I started with these scripts to write it when I didn't want to type any script so I designed it the way that it's only for clicking. So only with clicking, you'll be able to deploy labs and even huge environments. And so let's start. First thing you have to do is just type WSLAB into your browser. Pretty easy. And the first result will be GitHub page. And this is where you will obviously start. And just by scrolling down, I will try, I'm trying to introduce it, what is it about, that it creates some environment, it's a license under MIT license, so you can use it whatever you want. If MIT license doesn't suit you, just let me know, I can change it, I don't care. I want people to use this tool. 
and it's designed to spin environment so in the end you will see that you have some virtual machine with certain configuration on your laptop it will take for example like five minutes or so and it's pretty small it's low profile so you will have this um, I don't know in five minutes and it will be really small because it's using differencing disks and it's domain joint so you can directly work with some environment and not only uh, this part this is only about creating virtual machines but there is also another part that will be able to guide you some uh, through some scenarios so in this case I will click here on the scenarios and I can choose one of the 50 where I can demonstrate I don't know for example s2d and grafana i think let me just search for it <laughs> uh, there are so many things s2d and grafana where you will spin up complex environment where you have s2d cluster where you have uh, telegraph db where you have grafana service server and you basically in the end you have so many machines you have also certification authority and you do all the crazy things all the crazy things and everything with the PowerShell just by right clicking and many people will ask me hey but this is automation right and I'm saying no this is not automation this is this was never supposed to be automation this is like a I would say better documentation of uh, what you should be doing because you don't want to, you don't want to click things you want to describe it so people will understand what's actually happening so uh, any question, Karsten? Uh, yes, I, I yes, know yes, yes. I, I've, I, I've said, I, I've, I've, well, I've been talking about this too many times to you, and and I know you will have questions. Yes, please. Yeah, the uh, the funny thing is, uh, um, Jaromir um, wants to get me over to VS Lab for all my uh, all my demos, and so and uh, I ask him at a conference, please show me VS Lab. Uh, give me an introduction to it. And he took two hours of his time. We were presenting in Prague uh, at the Experts Live Europe, and you showed me all the stuff, and it is amazing. I really have to say it is amazing. Um, so the first thing, there is a start of everything. So I, I sent out a mail and said, you can spin up uh, demo or test environments in minutes, but that's of course not uh, the whole story. Uh, when you have when you start with it, you have to do some preparation. So, uh, Jaromir, exactly. what are the preparations you have to do uh, that you can spin up some uh, environments in minutes? And we want to see that later, of course. Good. So uh, again, this has two parts. It's also described in here in docs that it has two parts. One is hydration phase that to take some time. It takes one to two hours. It will just prepare some files. And then with these files, you can work within minutes, right? So you will have already domain controller that will be only imported. You will have all, all, also parent disks, but you start with the scripts. So there is a link for the scripts, which is a zip file. So let me just open it up. Okay, come on, should be downloading, yep. You can see I did download it for many times. So these are the scripts and it's pretty self-explaining. So I will just extract it into some folder so let me just create a folder and in here i will copy the scripts pretty easy right and as i said i, I wanted to make it as, as easy as possible so there is like one two and three and the only thing you have to remember is that you can right click on the script and run it with a powershell it's also possible to run it with powershell core on the github page we have a how to uh, Put here also a PowerShell core, so you can use both, but let's run it with a PowerShell. So, first script, what it does, it will just download some prerequisites, and, and this is the only part you need internet for. These prerequisites are just small files. It's not ISO files or anything like that. This is a folder structure that was needed for creating the second step, which is creating parent disks. Okay, so I'll go a little bit deep dive. So what it actually does, it uh, downloads the DSC. So there will be DSC modules that are used for hydrating domain controller. So it, you need to configure domain controller with the DHCP and all this crazy stuff. But again, you don't need to do anything, right? I'm just showing you, you will just wait a little bit and you will wait until this script will finish. It will take, it will finish in, let's say one minute or so. It will also create a folder that is called 2SUHD where it will create some folder structure 
and they all also download some tools like a disk speed. So this just demonstrates what kind of tools you can have, but you can uh, add here your own tools and then uh, tools VHD is created and this tool VHD can be attached then to the VMs you will create. Okay, it sounds a little bit complicated, but let's have it like this, let's wait. Now we can see that uh, uh, there's also parent disks folder. In the parent disks folder, there are two helper scripts. So for example, when you will have already uh, the lab created and you would like to have like to have you would like to have a different additional uh, VHD, for example, for Windows 10 or inside the preview when there will be one when there will be one released, you can just uh, right click on uh, and run with PowerShell on a create parent disk and you can provide it ISO file and from this ISO file it will create uh, whatever you want. So if you have Windows 10, you'll be asked what edition you would like to have, if professional or enterprise, and then uh, it will ask you how big it should be, and that's it. And you will then wait for 30 minutes and you will have your parent disk. I also included a uh, script to download cumulative updates, so you don't have to go anywhere. You, you can download cumulative updates. Yep, you will have a question, right, Karsten? Yes, yes, I have a question. How you know? <laughs> so. Um... This is uh, pretty cool, but it sounds that you leak uh, that you really need a beefy machine. Uh, and uh, what are the hardware uh, requirements you ha have to have for uh, for uh, this sure lab? Want. And I know you started very uh, very small, right, with a surface. Yes, yes, yes. Let me just uh, switch to my Twitter account, and I think that I have somewhere where I can see my 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 messages or my my media here in media. Yeah. I have to scroll down in the past, but I have there a pretty nice picture of Surface Pro 2 with eight gigs of memory. And I have there eight node S2D cluster. Uh, and I think on the screenshots is four node S2D cluster with Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, but oh, we believe you, yeah, you don't have I'm, to show the picture. <laughs> so you say- really, uh, really, so Eight yeah. gigabytes RAM is more than enough. I mean, oh, for when, the Windows small 10? labs. Yeah, Windows 10 is Windows enough 10, yes. with Hyper-V installed. Of course, you need a professional or yes. an enterprise version of Windows 10, not the home edition. Uh, you can have a server, of course, and eight gig of yes. RAM. More is, of course, better, but uh, and uh, how, better, how much right? disk do you need? 40 gig? Very oh, cool. So, well, well, I think it's 20, but I would say 40 is better because uh, 20 is just to have a parent disk and domain controller. But then if you would deploy some machines, then you know it will start consuming stuff. So I would say 40 gigs free space, mm -hmm. uh, but you can also go larger, that's for sure, because then with the largest labs, uh, you it's, it's good to have like 200 gigs, 300 gigs empty space, and it's really good to have the duplication. I know yeah. with the Windows 10 it's kind of issue, but with Windows 10 it works. Okay. Uh, but for Windows 10 there's a user voice, Please click on it, so we will have as many people as possible. Yep. Okay. Another so, question, of course. Um, if you say uh, 40 gigabytes and you deploy an, an eight-node S2D cluster, we know that that doesn't really fit into 40 gigabytes. So how do you do that? Oh, it actually fits. I think. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Um, let me just go into the finished phase, right, where I yeah. already have a folder. Uh, this is after hydration phase. So basically, this is first uh, first uh, script. I will run then second script, and the result of the second script is this folder, where you have uh, one, two, three scripts. These are just the logs. Let me just delete these logs because uh, it's a little bit confusing. So we have three scripts: uh, mm -hmm. cleanup, deploy, and config. And then you have parent disks. In this case, I already have more. So I usually you have just these three, which is 12 gigs for uh, Windows Server 2019 with GUI, seven and a half for uh, Windows Server 2019 with Core, and then some tools, right? In these tools, I already have, for example, a nano server image. So when I create uh, guest VMs, it's really, really small. And if I would deploy uh, the basic the basic configuration for node cluster, let me just right click and run with PowerShell on the deploy. What it will actually do, it will elevate it will import a uh, domain controller that is there hydrated from the second phase. 
Mm -hmm. ah, it's already happening. It will create a snapshot, so you can always clean up. And clean up what it will, what it will do. It will reverse the snapshot, so it, you will have always the the state when, uh, when you clicked on a deploy. So you will be always be able to return it to the to this state. So now you have domain controller that was hydrated during the second phase, right? You just import it. So this is the largest one, and the domain controller is uh, let's, see, let's see, it's 12 gigs. Right, and then with a snapshot, and then every other BM that is being created will be created in here in this folder, and uh, it will be differencing disk from the parent disk. So every new machine, what it will be done, I will create a new VHD with this parent VHD. I will open it up, inject answer file to domain join, close it, and then. Uh, in the end, you will just start it. So basically, for node S3 cluster can be really small because I think it will be like two or three gigs for our operating system. And then you will create a 12 for terabyte disks, but these disks will be dynamically expanding and it will start, I think, with 300 max each. I don't know how, much, how big is a blank VHD, so, but it's really, really small. It's, for, it's not for, big, for it's max. not huge. I it's, think it's for max. So yeah, the, the, okay. ma when the then magic you write here, something into it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So the magic is you use differentiating disks for the operating systems, and there, therefore you, exactly. you save a lot of space on on the on the uh, disk. Okay, that's cool. Yes, exactly. So let's go back into my folder here, where I run only the first prereq. Um, this is this one. You can see yeah. it took, uh, okay, in this case, two minutes. In case you do not have internet connection, you can do this on the internet connected machine. And then again, right click and run with the PowerShell once you copy it into the machine that is uh, offline. So it mm -hmm. can only, you know, check it if it's everything is in its place. It also, what it needs to do, there is one thing, it needs to copy DSC into the C Windows PowerShell somewhere where the modules are located. Mm -hmm. So just if you move it to some offline machine, you can just copy this prereq file. Okay, and now it will get funny because we will do this create parent disk. So once I will run it, again, the only thing you have to remember is right click and run with PowerShell. There is nothing else you need to remember because uh, everything else you will be guided. So it will ask you, hey, please select ISO file, ISO image with Windows Server 2016, 2019, or Windows Server Insider. I actually have a pop-up screen here, um, which will go and say, please provide me Windows Server 2016, 2019, or Server Insider. I can navigate to, in this case, Redstone 5, uh, there is a Windows Server 2019. I'll select it, say open, and um, it will test it if it's server media. It will then ask you for MSU. This is cumulative update. Mm -hmm. So you can either go to your folder, go to parent disk and you know, right click and run with PowerShell on the downloads latest cumulative update folder, or I can go here, I can go into the ISO file, I can, uh, oh no, I have it here in CU folder, so I maintain my special CU folder with the very same script I have I have in here, in the parent disk, mm -hmm. so this is the same, and I can just run, right click, run with PowerShell, and it will download uh, latest bit. So in this case, I selected 18.09 and downloaded uh, the latest cumulative update and servicing stack update. So I can just navigate into the, this folder and select it. So I lost my I lost my pop-up window somewhere. Yes. Oh, where is it? <laughs> you are it's a crazy, magician yeah. with uh, Windows, right? <laughs> yeah, it's here. It's here, so you we have can multi-select okay. cumulative updates, right? Ooh. And now it will do all the stuff, right? So it will create a parent disks. So it will create two uh, VHDs and the parent disks folder. So this is my folder. Oh, don't worry. Sometimes you will get a pop-up that because the new disk is connected. But if I go to my folder, there will be parent disk, and now there is already a disk for Windows Server 2019 and Windows Server 2019 core being created. Once this will be created, it will create a domain controller. And the last step, it will ask you, do you want to clean up all the 
not necessary files, so all unnecessary files, and the result will be, as I said, this folder where you will have, you know, just a few parent disks with Windows Server 2019 and 2019 core. If you want to have more like 2016 nano server, which is really useful, you can just right click on the create parent disk and then provide it whatever media you have. Uh, like if the server insider will be released, you can also provide it server insider. Mm -hmm. So here, whatever I have, uh, for example, in my case, I have even Windows Server 2012 R2. You can provide it. It will. So let me just do it. Uh, I selected 2012 R2. I don't want to do any MSU packages because I don't have any for this one, and it's uh, it's really uh, long. It's it's taking long to download all the cumulative updates for 2012 R2. But I can also select what kind of uh, image I would like to have, if, if it's mm -hmm. have a core or server with a GUI. But 2012 R2, you probably want to have GUI. I prefer core. <laughs> and it will <laughs> automatically say, hey, do you want to specify your VHD name? If nothing is specified, 2012 R2 core G2 VHDX is used. I'm fine with this. Enter. Uh, again, size, by default 60. Blank is good. Enter, enter. And now VHD is being created. So you can have as many parent disks as you want. That's cool. Really cool. Easy, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and the next step, uh, the one so you, step you, I wait, when wait, I was wait, deploying. Uh, so... Yaromir, wait, wait, wait. You yes. said you, you prefer yes, yes, core. Yes, yes. And this is the, always the <laughs> fight between full and core. So I assume um, VS Lab is then also fully running under a core. So if you have a core server, can you also it's use depends. it? Okay. It depends, right? It depends what you configure. So I didn't talk about the lab config yet. It's a okay, crazy okay, later. file. If you just double click it and open it, if you open it up, it looks like this. It's crazy, right? But yeah. if you right click on it and say edit, uh, it will open up in PowerShell ISC. And the only thing you have to remember it. Okay, let me just. Uh, Move you have to like install um, the um, how it's called the FOD, the feature on demand, so the, that you oh, have IC on core. To... No, 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 no. If you have it, I'm I'm doing everything on my Windows 10 machine, right? So ah, okay. The core is inside, right? But this lab config, the only thing you have to remember that you uh, the, the 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 things that are configured are the colored one, the green one are just comments, and in yeah. these comments, I'm trying to explain what actually is happening, and I'm using regions. So when you when you click Control plus M, the regions will collapse, and it's like uh, now it's more readable, I would I, I guess, right? And if you start reading, it's like uh, there is a lab config, there is a domain admin name, uh, admin password. Aha! So you will know how to log in into the environment because this is already preset. There's a prefix. In this case, I commented out the prefix. You can even delete it like this because the lab is automatically using the folder name. So in this case, my lab is in this folder. I usually I'm using uh, build numbers, and then my lab is created with the prefix. So and the prefix in this case is a folder name and plus dash. So I know which lab is which one, because if I then have, a, for example, different lab in different folder, I can again do deploy, or what you can even do, you can copy the folder, just copy paste, and then just again do deploy, and don't care about the prefixes. I, I was considering to remove it completely, the prefix, but I wanted to make it self-documenting, so I'm keeping it there. Maybe I will just comment it out, because it will then use the folder name as a prefix. So this way I have, uh, Okay, so this is this is the lab when it's deployed, how it looks like. Actually, the names of the VMs are DC and S2D1, S2D2, S2D3, S2D4. I'm using it as a one-liner. So this is basically a hash table, I would say. So let me just show you. Uh, I'll just run this. this. It doesn't do anything. It will just create a hash table in the lab config variable. So if you write it down as a lab config, and in the lab config, there are VMs. And this is like a definition of the VMs. If you would like to have 400 VMs instead of four, it's then super easy because you can just add two digits <laughs> and it will, you know, create, it will take some time. Uh, um, but if I'll write down the VMs, it's 400 VMs, right? But this is so easy. 
Yeah. So okay. uh, cool. Cool. Uh, wait. Wait. Wait a second. We have already twenty five yes, minutes. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but I think you covered the basics. How you uh, download the stuff. You have scripts for everything. Mm -hmm. I I love it. To to hydra uh, hydrate all your stuff. Um, um, and now I want to uh, get uh, to to give the the attendees a little bit of a push. If you have any questions, please ask them in the question part. We will include them here. So Jaromir uh, really wants question from the audience because um, I do a lot of scripting. Maybe you have some some questions there. Please ask them. Um, Kurz in Deutsch. Also wenn ihr irgendwelche Fragen habt, bitte, bitte fragt sie. Jaromir möchte wirklich Fragen haben. Ich weiß, das ist hier ein bisschen overwhelming. Also es ist super cool, das anzugucken. Ich sitze auch immer davor und folge ihm, wie er das alles macht. Und wir werden vielleicht auch noch mal eine Session machen, wo wir das Ganze, wo wir Jaromir auf halbe Geschwindigkeit stellen und dann noch mal alles genießen und zugucken. Also wenn ihr Fragen habt, bitte rein in den Chat. Back to you, Jaromir. We have now our prerequisites uh, so now maybe we go to some scenarios or, or do you want to add to this face because uh, we have a very shy was... audience they don't ask questions oh it's unfortunate uh, so uh, i want just to repeat right so the only thing you had to do is right click on the powershell scripts you were pro you were asked what to provide so you don't have to remember anything else than just to click one two three and then of uh, the result of the basic lab is that you have for S2D VMs, and I will show you what's actually there. Um, in each VM, if I'll go to settings, by default, you have 12 hard drives. So you don't have to manually configure your VMs with a lot of drives. So this is already there. Uh, each drive is four terabytes. And that was a question, right? How big it yeah. actually is? It's five megabytes. You, you're very right. But I think after I will just turn it on, it will, it will. When I will start touching the file, it will expand to 300. Uh, so it's dynamically expanding. If I'll take a look in my OS drive, let's take a look there again. I will go to the lab folder. There's VMs. There are my nodes, virtual hard disks, and this is my OS drive. This is 300 max. So. I was also right, you were also right. So when you touch the VHD, when you open it up, it will grow to 300. Um, so, and then the next step, what I will do, I also configure two NICs. And in the GUI, you can see in here that these NICs are actually uh, configured to allow multiple VLANs. So there is a trunk mode. And cool. it will allow uh, by default 10 VLANs. Right, so there's a native one, which is when it, there is nothing configured, it will end up in the management uh, where you will be able to see the main controller. So you will receive a IP address from DHCP. However, when you want to play with the uh, VLANs, then you can play by default with 10 VLANs. But of course, you can configure in the lab config to have as many VLANs you want. Yeah. By default, when I strike, to... yes. Uh, uh, finish the sentence and then I. Uh... Last yeah, I, I tried. I tried already to specify by default 1024 VLANs, but uh, it doesn't work that way. So <laughs> there's probably some limit, right? So I limited this to 10 VLANs, but you can configure as many VLANs you want. Okay. But you can um, learn all of this from the scenarios, and uh, okay. we will go. There. We will get there. Yes, please, okay, Karsten. Cool. So I have a, so I have two questions. Uh, uh, one attendee asks, can this be used on an existing S2D cluster, uh, Windows Server 2016? So are the, there are two possibilities. Does he mean you use VS Lab uh, to do demos uh, on the a, cluster on a, itself? Yeah. So, or so, does he so does he mean deploy uh, deploy a VS uh, 2016 cluster? I asked him, but he didn't. No, but you didn't uh, answer okay. my question, so I, I didn't know. So there are two there are two things. If you want to run WS Lab inside the S2D cluster you already have deployed, and you want to have multiple apps in an S2D cluster, this is possible. There is one if, right? Now currently it doesn't support CSV. So I'm waiting for someone to deploy it on the cluster and tell me, hey, it doesn't work on the CSV, so I can do this one line change because I'm too lazy for it. Uh, to do this one line change to you know uh, mount the CSV and sorry mount the VHD outside the CSV because you cannot mount VHD on the CSV and by default I mount VHDs in the temp drive. But mm -hmm. then I would just modify it and mount it into some temp folder in the Windows, whatever, wherever. 
So it's some good. But I'm just waiting for someone to try it and give me a feedback and hit an issue to, to be able to deploy it inside the AWS lab, uh, inside S3 cluster, sorry. And the second thing, can I deploy with AWS lab real clusters? And this gets us to the scenarios. Yes, you can with the scenarios where I was trying to describe how you should do stuff. So let's okay, go I have to another, this. I have, an, I have another question, wait, I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. So Norbert uh, clarifies, he uh, he meant uh, doing VS Lab as demo in, uh, in an S2D cluster. I don't understand your issue with the mounting uh, a VHDX on, on the host to do something. I, I've, I've doing that with my uh, oh, S2D script. So we, yeah, we have to, uh, they are of course on a CSV. Um, um, but we can talk about that uh, uh, afterwards. And the other question is, um, uh, is there a scenario planned for an RDS environment? So to deploy RDS hosts, maybe with gateway and so on. Ah, I, yeah, so no. So Vladimir is here, like uh, we already did something, right? Together with Vladimir, uh, we were, can you unmute Vladimir? Because there was some blocker, I think, right? Uh, actually, there are no large blockers, but there were not huge demand from the anyone yet. So I have it in my shelf. I have pre I have prepared some, let's say, scenario for RDS, but there is no need to release it. So if there is some request for it, I think I can polish it and make it available, actually. But most of the new development is happening on the Windows Virtual Desktop, which is out of the scope for a VS Lab, actually, right now. Okay, I, I have a su suggestion, guys. So. I have my uh, I have all the uh, uh, webinar attendees. If you prepare a question and answer, if you want people to say you what what they want, maybe we can talk about that later and prepare um, a, um, a where you can vote which features uh, where where you want to know if people want that feature. Yeah, yeah maybe we can do that. We have it on GitHub, so anyone can open an issue and we can start discussion and all other people can. Pick it up on that. That's the, a good, a good idea, up. but not everyone is familiar with GitHub like the Microsoft employees are. <laughs> Let <laughs> me so show it. It's super easy, right? <laughs> so we go to issues and it will create new issue. That's it. And say, hey, I want RDS scenario. And then uh, let's discuss and submit new issue. And that's it. Super easy, right? And we will discuss it here and and we actually what you want motivation right because for us the only thing we know is now if you'll go to uh if you'll go to i think it's oh i'm logging in okay i think it's in settings no uh insights sorry insights if i go to insights i can see the traffic i can see people are using it there are 2500 views per two weeks i guess and we have 565 visitors oh Whoa, what the heck? Nice. I okay. didn't have seen the unicorn. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we have some visitors and we know where are they coming from. Oh, there's yeah. a Reddit thread. That's good. That's good. Uh, look it up afterwards. We don't we don't have time. We only have an hour, you know. <laughs> you have an hour, but we can continue, right? Can we can we go go uh, I have a proposal for later. Maybe maybe we do half a day of VS Lab. Uh, <laughs> online what do you think oh maybe that sounds good i i think it sounds good because there's so much to show so um okay. i have another question but i answered that already yeah yeah you are yes johannes you can download it on an on a pc all of it and then use it in an air gapped environment um uh, and i have another question from johannes uh, uh, is it possible to have an existing domain joint hyper v cluster considering a four hyper v hosts and use a Hyper-V cluster for VS Lab. If yes, are previous existing VMs not created by VS Lab be modified by VS Lab or are they left as they are? I can answer that, but Jeremy, if you want, you can do that too. Yes, the only thing you should do is if you run cleanup, run with PowerShell, it will ask, uh, do you want to clean it up and actually how it detects? Um, yeah. Uh, let me just move this window. How it will detect the machines? It's using the prefix to detect everything. So it will ask, hey, do you really want to clean all of these four machines, right, with this DC? 
and it will also remove the switch with this prefix. So the way I identify the lab is using the prefix. Mm -hmm. So you are safe if you have other machines on there, they will not be uh, removed. Or yeah, there's a funny story, okay. right? There was a PFE and he did uh, lab config without the prefix and then he hit a cleanup so i think after that i test if the and i also show what vms i will clean up <laughs> okay so now let's go to some scenarios uh, uh, <laughs> okay, <good>. you guys <laughs> well, i started all of these machines right so now you can see how much memory it consumes by default it's only 512 megs for a memory startup actually when it will boot it will take a few minutes i mean one minute, I guess. After it will boot, you'll be able to see this is server core and there's nothing to do there. The only thing you want to work with is a management machine. In this case, it's a domain controller. So I will log in into the domain controller, which is running in my environment. Come on. So for the old config. guys, uh, Jaromir, for the old yes. guys, can we also deploy a full uh, a full installation of server and work on the server yes. is it possible okay yes. thank you it's possible. <laughs> uh, but you don't want to do it and i will show I you why I, I i tell you i want okay i know it i know i know i know we know we have uh, we've been <laughs> multiple discussions about that <laughs> exactly but it's so much easier when you learn to manage things from your management machine it's so much easier uh so the way I deploy scenarios, a basic scenario here is, and I, I'm also writing it here about the scenarios. The basic scenario is uh, S2D hyperconverged. So let me click on it. And it's actually in under scenarios, there's S2D hyperconverged. And in the readme, I usually describe what are the prerequisites, you know, what you can do with the scenario uh, and how to. You know. So there's like a deploy PS1 result that you will deploy it. As an old screenshot when I called it WS, WS 2016 lab, but now it's just WS, WS lab. Then you will copy scenario script into your domain controller into the PowerShell ISC where you click on the control plus M and let me do it for you. So there is a scenario PS1. I'll click on it. It's a really ugly script. I'll click on raw. I'll copy everything with control plus C. I will Logging on into the domain controller, I will run, I usually run PowerShell like this, and then from PowerShell, I run PowerShell ISE like like this as admin. And I and I simply put one PowerShell on the left and PowerShell ISE to the right. I'll switch to just a script here, paste everything, and click on control plus M. So I have regions. And now there is a basic of the uh, scenario. I want to teach people with the scenarios. I don't want to automate things. So that's why you can copy just the regions like this, or you can even just copy everything like that. Just copy it with the right click and copy and paste it with the right click of the PowerShell. And you can see in this region, I'm just pasting here some variables. Now it's really looks like a scary because it's a powershell and it's a lot of uh, variables and everything okay so let's take a look on the install features and then here i detect on what kind of machine i am um, i'm using let me just full screen it i'm using i'm using some uh, some value from the registry and i'll grab what is the windows installation time oh so let me try it right so i will right click it put it here and now you can start learning you can copy this variable you can paste it and see oh this is server right how the guy is doing it and he's get item property value okay now you can copy this to your scripts and now this way you can learn how to detect your machine what is your build number okay let's try it so this way you won't want to really learn. Mm -hmm. It's not about blinding, blindingly pasting the script. I can paste the script for sure, right? It will just, you know, uh, grab what I'm, uh, what version I am, and then because I'm Windows Server, I'll be installing RSAT clustering, RSAT clustering management, and so on and so forth. So this way you can copy these regions and paste it either line by line or region by region and looking into it until taking a look what i'm actually doing but you can see in general i'm installing some features to the management machine i do updating or servers if file set 
Windows update to true, which is in here a variable, which is by default false, I will I will invoke command to my list of the servers. So, aha, in the variables, there's a list of my servers, so it will just generate the number because if you have 400 machines or 40,000 machines, it will generate it so much easier, right? But I have a list of my machines and to these machines, I will send a command, invoke command, computer name service, script block, aha. Uh -huh. If the release ID is 1607, then I will do something. In, in case it's not, then I will grab the updates with the scan result and apply it like this. Oh, this is the new way of applying updates. So you can do it with a PowerShell. Again, you learn something new, right? And it's so much better for you than to click over and over on every machine uh, how to how to update it. You will just, you know, and then you can just copy this put it into your own documentation. I don't want you to use these scripts. I want you to learn from this and copy pieces you like and keep it for your personal scripts you use, for example, for deployment of the real world clusters. But in case you don't care, you, for example, just want to demo someone what is here, you can simply say, okay, I'll just copy the rest of the scripts and just right click and paste it, grab a coffee and watch it what it's doing. Cool. Right. So I have two. I have two more questions. Um, yes. Um, Norbert is asking, and uh, that's a very good one, I think. Uh, do hit problems with AMD architectures because of nested virtualization uh, possibilities? Ah. Uh, so far, okay, there so... is no nested virtualization for AMD. I know okay. what Microsoft is working on it, but we don't have There's it yet. There's inside the preview. There's inside the preview with uh, nested virtualization enabled. Uh, David Where? was announced last week. It was okay, announced I need last it. week, I think. Okay. okay. Cool. Good. For Win for Windows Good. 10 or for server? For Windows, Windows 10. 10. Okay, Windows I need 10. it. Uh, okay, cool. Um, the next question is: So on Windows 10, you heard him. You can. Uh, uh, there's no Norbert ISO. Says, uh, Vladimir just told me that there is no ISO file yet. I guess it was just announced, uh, right? No, Norbert said the same. It's it's not available yet, so he know of it. But it will be uh, some exactly. days uh, soon. So then, uh, Peter. Peter has a remark, and that's of course true. Um, um, using a DC uh, is not really the safest that's thing great, to do. That's a great question. <laughs> yes, that's true. I like it. So in case you want, you can go to the lab config and add your management machine that is Windows 10 and then do demonstrating all of this, like how it should be. So some of my scenarios are doing, for example, uh, Grafana, let me just go Grafana. So in the Grafana scenario, I even create a management machine, which is Windows 10 in here, right? Uh, in this case, it's turned off. And then you can log in into the Windows 10 machine and do everything from there. Or you can have Windows Server 2016 or yeah. 2019 as a management machine dedicated for this. And all of these scripts are compatible for this. So all of these uh, scripts are in mind. So if in case, for example, you are running this from a Windows 10, it will make sure that these Windows 10 features are enabled. So Hyper-V is enabled and also uh, remote server administration tools are enabled. So basically everything is invoked and it's pretty awesome. Thank you for this because it's not right what I'm doing here, but it's a lab and this is my machine that has a GUI and to be smallest lab possible, this is the way to go. However, mm -hmm. if you want, you can have extra Windows 10 or Windows uh, Server 2019 with GUI machine and do everything from there. Excellent question. Thank you. Cool. So the, we are up with the question. So we are just looking at your S2D deployment and it's already good. Good. So, so, so for example, here I'm now installing the features. So how would you normally install uh, features on the machine? You would go either phone for uh, server manager here at your servers, uh, you know, add it into your list of the servers and then, you know, go one by one or you can do it more smarter ways that's what i'm trying to teach people that it's so much easier just to say invoke command to your servers and then install features and the list of the features you want so yeah. that this is where i define the list of the features you can have it just one liner where you will have a list of all features and then invoke it to the machines and say i want to install all these features and then because you are invoking it you i'm using this using features because then it will bubble into the command you are sending remotely and also for example restarting machines i'm just uh, restarting the machine and i'm just waiting for powershell to come up again 
and this will restart your machines remotely and this is so super easy so and you can just again grab a coffee and you know and you can watch everything i'm doing i'm trying to describe in this one scenario i'm trying to describe all the best practices that are published everywhere so i just tried to uh you know for example dell recommends to have hardware timeout uh, configured to 10 seconds right because of 730 xds with itachi but when i exactly. asked last time dell they keep it there so it's here in case you are doing this in the virtual environment and then i increase uh hardware timeout to 30 seconds because in virtual environments it can be really slow and you don't want to remove drives because it's you know slow then i configure memory dump if you want kernel i make kernel but by default i say active memory dump so it will just set to registry properties again by invoking a command to two servers right so mm -hmm. this way so it's not automation please it's not automation this is not never ever was supposed to be an automation this was like for me because i was lazy to click the environments all over so i just wrote it as a script but people should use it the way that they should disassemble their script and th you should create their own ones right and okay. then the, the scripts they remember uh, they I, ha understand. I have to i have to hurry you because we have uh, we can do a little bit longer of course but people are at work so we should have the most stuff out in 60 minutes so we have 14 minutes left so uh, what are the scenarios you like the most oh there are so many scenarios i like so the last <laughs> one is the, the grafana where i yeah. set up the grafana for the monitoring as to the infrastructure and I created a video uh, with, on MVP day. So if you go to the root to read me, there's also a link for the video. So this will actually explain how the uh, scenarios work, how uh, structure of the scenario is, how it looks like. So if you go to scenario, there's a lab config, uh, you can copy into your lab config so you don't have to you know, create your own uh, setup. So you can just follow some. Um, and then it will walk through the regions, what's actually done there, because it's very, very complex, because it's uh, there's also LDAP and secured LDAP and so on. So there, there's a lot. You can also set up, for example, certification authority. This is also my favorite, because you really want to have certification authority and then play with some certificates, right? And this is so easy. What you can just do is just, you know, in this case, I can just copy this one line. I'll go to my lab config, I will add it here somewhere, just this one line under my list of the servers, close it, say right click, run with PowerShell on the deploy, and it will add me this certification authority machine, right? Cool. And it will be like one minute or something. And then you can continue. I can install certification authority just by copying this. No, just copy. Then I will go to the domain controller and just paste it. And you can then, you know, try to read through the what actually is happening. And you can see, okay, create a data folder and CPS text file. Okay, invoke command to the computer name CA, this script block. Good. And in the end of the scenario, by the way, you will have uh, uh, TPM uh, attested certificates enrolled to your servers. In the lab because what i do oh, here cool. i have windows server 2016 or 2019 with tpm enabled oh this is the way you cannot tpm right because you by reverse engineering these scenarios or oh, there's not working progress is already finished whatever but you can create also vtm vtpms inside the machines so there's so many things possible cool i had a web webinar about that last the last time very cool. So mm -hmm. let's let's ask uh, uh, Vladimir. Vladimir, what is the scenario you are the most <laughs> proud of? Actually, uh, the first scenario I was creating was for Windows Admin Center to showcase what are all the deployments. Actually, that was the way how was, I was learning how WS Lab works. It was really easy to set it up. And to be honest, I created the scenario just after one day trying to do it. The most of the time I spent was doing how GitHub uh, actually renders the text because all the PowerShell scripts are self-explanatory. So that's really easy to start up with. And now what I'm now focusing more is on the internals of VSLAB. Uh, there's long 
overdue and pending to finish and it's also adding the Linux support for the VS Lab because we want to be playing more with Kubernetes and Kubernetes is actually expanding, uh, expecting Linux to be able to be deployed with also. So that's just something I'm trying to find a way how to make it as easy as with Windows. Hopefully we will see some results soon. I am now able to create a machine. So, so to, 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 to say that again, you are working on uh, Linux integration in VS Lab because of Kubernetes, yes, that's because goal. a lot of stuff exactly. is going on with Kubernetes. That's very cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, um, we have now the S2D is maybe deployed. Um, so um, can you show us the scenario? Uh, Jaromir? Okay, so it, now it's, it's hard doing... to separate you two. It's Jaromir and Vladimir. That's uh, <laughs> quite similar. I think, I think it didn't yet do everything. Now it's uh, creating virtual switches. Now it created yeah. virtual switch and now it will be probably doing some addressing. So let's take a look, right? So what we have so far. So if I'll go to tools, Hyper-V manager, I can connect to one of the machines, right? So connect to server as to the UN, I guess. And with the graphical tools, I will be able to see that there's a virtual switch called set switch. And it's switch embedded team because you cannot do anything in here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could also deploy a Windows Admin Center and take a look with the Windows Admin Center, right? It's also yeah. possible. Uh, I have so a scenario how, how, for it. How would you add a Windows Admin Center to your department? Oh, that's, good that's a, question. That's I great think question. that's a question for. we need. So uh, you maybe want to add the gateway mode installation with self-signed certificate because you don't want to mess up with the certificates. So yeah. what I will do, I'll need to have a machine for it. So I will have a back gateway, single machine. Let me just add it like this. And I think we can make it in time before we'll end. So I will add into my lab config this swag gateway, save it, I will deploy it. So this will be just an empty server that is domain joint, right? So uh, pretty easy. And then the next step, uh, desktop, okay, this one. Install admin center in gateway mode. Okay, so first of all, I need to download it anyway. So first copy this part to download Windows admin center. If it's not present, I will download it for uh, to uh, user profile downloads, okay. Good, pretty easy, right? So I'll open up the PowerShell and I will just right click. By the way, you have already internet in the uh, in here because what I, what is being used, uh, the default, uh, defaults which is being used if you are on the Windows client, if you are on Windows server, then I use uh, whatever adapter is available. If more adapters are available, I'll ask you which one you do you want to use. If you already have external switch, it will always, already use the external switch uh, for internet connectivity. Then it will install NAT into the domain controller and NAT all the traffic into the VM. So it's separated. So you can have multiple uh, labs in parallel. And by the way, I forget to mention one thing, Karsten, this is for you, because if you want to teach workshops with the WS lab, the only thing you have to do to distribute this to your um, uh, uh, attendees, for example, is either you can send them lab config if they already have a WS lab, so it's super easy, so it's small. And if it's on a one room, for example, if you do trainings uh, for the group of the people with their laptops, I usually what I do, I just grab the WS lab folder with the parent disks I prepare, for example, with the tools disk I prepare and copy it into the disks, to the external disk, People will copy it using USB 3 SSD. It's super fast. So in two minutes, they have it on the laptop and they can just deploy. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then you can just modify the lab config and that's it. Okay, so it looks like it's downloading it. I'm on the LTE, so it takes some time. Maybe are, are you sure will... that it's downloading? Because it stays Maybe, for that I forever. <laughs> so let's see into the downloads. It's downloading. Good. Okay. By the way, in here you can see now it's configuring uh, IP addresses for SMB adapters. So there is SMB01 and SMB02 uh, adapter, and I'm using IP ad uh, static IP addresses for it. So yeah, so we we should be able to see it in here in all servers. We should see that there will be IP addresses. Let me refresh it. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit jumping from the left and right. So sorry about this. It's Downloading now, uh, Windows Admin Center. Um, what I should probably do is also install Edge. So let me just copy and install Edge. Uh, 
as a, again a script because it's so much easier than to click right i will just sort of select a bunch of code you can save it somewhere and you have it you can have it somewhere uh, at your hand when you need to do something so this will install edge this will download windows admin center in meanwhile our st i started gateway so gateway is now being started you can see small hyper-v logo in here mm -hmm. and then when this hyper-v logo will disappear and there will be something i know that the machine started oh now yeah now it started so hopefully this will be downloaded soon come on so you're also using uh, the uh, core edition for the gateway mode for WAC, okay? Because I don't care what is there, because I'm never touched. Uh, I'm never logging into the machines. You don't need to really. You really don't mm -hmm. need to. Once you know how to, when your infrastructure is on the Hyper-V, then you don't need to mess up with the with the drivers, right? And with the physical host, it's only about the drivers and the utilities and all of this stuff. But we are somehow planning to, you know, also script all of these. But we need to get hardware into Jan's, you know, Jan Mortensen, the guy who is really great in networking. It's also in the Slack channel. But this guy has a, in Denmark 10 empty tracks of for ready for OEM configurations. So when we will get their OEM configurations, I already spoke with the Lenovo, so hopefully they will send it some something there. We'll be able to script also the drivers and everything. Cool. Okay, it's it's weird. It's it's downloading, but it's what the heck? It's uh, your forever. internet is very slow, right? It's six, four, five, whatever megabits. So and then then what you would do is to install it. You would just you know create PowerShell session and copy the files to the remote machine. Oh, come, come on. And then uh, install Windows Admin Center and add certificate to trusted root certificates to your machine, to the local machine, so you will not see this warning when you will access. Uh, oh, come on, it's downloading it forever. It should be already downloaded by this time. It's only uh, 50 megabytes. Four megabits. Yeah, but four megabits connection. It's LTE. Ah, terrible, 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 terrible. And so I'm also downloading the the Edge. So the idea is just to right click, and after that you will open up the Edge. You would yeah, I had, edge a, I had here, internet issues this IPFS morning too. To yeah. So maybe come back to the S2D so that we can show maybe something <laughs> finished that would be great. And uh, we can we can go ah, over. But you wanted to see if you wanted to see. I I, I should have. Uh, already prepare some cluster before but anyway if we would be waiting a little bit more because now the IP addresses are being injected and yeah. because uh, it's using some adapters sometimes it timeouts you can help it to to make it faster but it will work out anyway without that right but do you can make it faster by uh, uh, flush DNS so uh, I how's it called uh, clear DNS client cache DNS client because it thinks that I, because by default I have there two adapters with two IP addresses mm -hmm. um, and when you create a set switch then it's one IP address and when you start adding their IP addresses the, for some reason it disconnects and then it tries to connecting for probably for the older IP address I don't know but actually it's yeah you can see there are two IP addresses of 10 something but then you uh, basically remove this 10 dot something address and then you need to put there a static IP address so then it thinks it disconnected because it's trying the old IP address so yeah it will you know wake up but anyway for now I have set switches on the machine so let me just go to the PowerShell it's not anyway in the GUI right so there's something finished ah let me just install this um, Windows Admin Center gateway mode it will be um is it like this copy i think i think this okay ps session and copy it there good good and how about edge edge is still being downloaded anyway it will finish so enter ps session s to d1 or we can say that these are my server servers equals s to d1 s to d2 ah s to d3 and s to d4 next time i'll just just do one to four and it will be fast i guess so enter or get vm switch 
sim session and this was based on the WS lab this will it will teach you how to manage multiple servers at once so you can get VM switch from multiple servers pretty easy right so we have a virtual switch come on come on <laughs> so this one this one is correct that's, of time course that's the issue with live demos i love live demos but the people are always I amazed better, that right? when something is wrong yeah. it's not wrong actually it's, it's okay right because the uh, it takes it's time. about just a, about timing issues but uh actually it's it's it will it will return us uh the the, the switches now you can see that it's it's reconnected again so we should have this information in here by any minute yeah just minimize it now it's installing the edge here now it's also installing the windows admin center we should have edge really soon here in the okay. list and i should be able to connect here we go yeah. let me say something to my audience uh, or our audience <laughs> so um we will go on a bit uh, and uh, show the uh, i hope we can show the cluster with vac uh, so you get the uh, recording afterwards um, um but if you have any questions so far please ask them uh, in the recording we don't have the chance to answer uh, answer questions that are not are not uh, asked by the audience. So um, noch mal kurz uh, in Deutsch. Um, wir werden noch weitermachen, uh, bis wir den S2D-Cluster sehen mit WAC, würde ich vorschlagen. Uh, das seht ihr dann natürlich in dem Recording. Das ist ein bisschen länger, wenn ihr jetzt raus müsst. Aber wenn ihr noch uh, finale Fragen habt, die ihr noch loswerden möchtet, Richtung uh, Jaromir oder Wladimir, stellt sie bitte jetzt, weil in der Aufzeichnung haben wir keine Möglichkeiten, Fragen zu beantworten, die nicht gestellt worden sind. Also wenn noch Fragen da sind, bitte jetzt. Und ich äh, denke darüber nach, vielleicht mit Jaromir und Wladimir mal einen halben Tag oder so zu machen, äh, ähm, äh, wo man das ein bisschen tiefer zeigen kann. Johannes, äh, Feedback? So, äh, Johannes, it's not over. You can still stay. Uh, Johannes is thanking us for the webinar. It, it, it was great. Um, so, um, thank you, Johannes. And we go on now. <laughs> good, good. So, in meanwhile, you can see I wrote the command to get all my network adapters that are connected to management operating system on my servers. So you can see I have my management NIC and then two SMB NICs on every machine, right? And this way you can also validate uh, the configuration if you go to the script uh, that I'm deploying here. You can uh, dig out, for example, how I validate configuration on the network. But I'm actually working on better documentation. I hope I will be releasing it soon, where you will be able to go and create a cluster, like let's say with a PowerShell, but with more, let's say, be with better description what's actually doing, what's, what's, actually, uh, what's actually happening. And with, uh, let's say, do and then test so you will be able to send the test command on even configured cluster just to see how the networks look like for example right so cool. when i he, when i have here configured networking i somewhere here have a verify ip config so you can get that ip address of, of the machine so i yeah. can just copy this one uh, but it's not nice to uh, you know, grab everything from from the from the script. But as you can see, now the IP addresses are configured. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, a uh, uh, suggestion: yes. Can you finish the cluster by, by while you're talking, or are you just doing it's, that? It's, it's being finished. So it's uh, now it's uh, testing the cluster. Okay. Cool. As you can see, yeah. and now in, in, a, in a few minutes it will create it. But anyway, I, what I will do, I will just go to um, uh, to the gateway. You can yeah. see the certificate is now trusted, even ah, if it's self-signed, cool. because I copied the certificate to my trusted root certificate using the PowerShell. And as you could see, I was just pasting something from GitHub, right? And I can learn about it later. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me just use different account, and it will be corp slash lab admin ls1 setup exclamation mark. Oh. And this this is great about this environment. It's uh, you can show all the passwords, you can show show all the accounts. Nothing is confidential because it's actually running in your laptop, and I, I will wipe uh, wipe it later. So how about the script uh, the cluster? Now it's being tested. Oh, okay, Be before even it's created. So let me just first add one of the nodes. Let's try if it works. What I also did in the script 
is that I, because this is in the gateway mode, and in the gateway mode, you need to configure Kerberos constraint delegation, right? Or resource-based mm -hmm. delegation. So let me just configure it with this simple command. Oh, it's done. It was here, right? I'm getting all the computers from the AD with operating system Windows Server. And for each of these computers, I'm setting this principle allowed to delegate account yeah. for the gateway object. So when I will now add my S2D1 machine, for example, because the cluster is not yet created, right? S2D1. I'll be using credentials uh, that can be delegated to the machine. So I will not be prompted for the credentials again, which is really useful, I would say. Let's add it. See, so here's my node with Windows Server Core. So I can have some overview. Let's see if the cluster is being created. Ah. Now it's creating the cluster, good, right? So there's also some logic. So if I specify cluster IP in the variables, then it's using static IP address for the uh, cluster itself. Otherwise it's creating new cluster with a dynamic IP address. It's forming the cluster. So I guess I should be able to do cluster soon, but let me just uh, open up the clue admin. Ah, oh, come on. I'll show you the window, Ooh, admin. So you will see what I'm doing. And because I want to show you both old tools and new tools, Windows Admin Center and Failover Cluster Manager, I can connect to the cluster, as to the cluster here, and we will see what's actually happening there. Um, What's here? Yep, I'm configuring block cache size, and soon it will enable witness and everything. I like it because you can grab a coffee and just, you know, now it's mm. creating the witness on the file share. I think witness, oh, file share witness is here. Already there, yeah. Yep, it's doing what it's doing bandwidth limits for SMB. It's also renaming the cluster network. So you have nice names here like management and SMB. By the way, if you want to have two SMB networks, it's just a variable because by default there's one, but you can say two and it will That's create cool. two I, I was networks. tempted to ask you that if you have the possibility <laughs> to use two SMB. <laughs> yes, of course you can because you have multiple VLANs, right? So in the lab config, you will just say, I want to have a uh, two storage networks here, number two, right? And in, in case you have number of storage nets two, it will the logic will use this one. So you mm -hmm. can set up your own prefixes for storage nets and all your own uh, storage VLANs, cool. right? So you can even, if, if I modify this, I could uh, deploy the real cluster. This is just a list of the variables you can modify. And if it's not here, you can just rewrite portion of the script. Okay, so there's SMB network, and I'm run, run, uh, I'm adding cluster ever updating role here, so you can play with cluster ever updating. Um, right, so what's here? Bandwidth limits, right? I'm I'm calculating the bandwidth limits. I think I'm uh, configuring it to 40% out of the capacity of two adapters, so it will not eat up entire adapter if you lose one. Because if you would be, if it would be for example just for fifty percent or sixty percent, then it would be just too much, I guess. Okay. So and again, you can uh, do reverse engineering of the add cluster add, add cluster or updating role, and as you can see, as a prerequisite, you need to have uh, RSAT clustering PowerShell, for example. Mm. Okay, let me just make it full screen because it will be better, I guess. Um, okay, it will take a little bit time. And I think it, in a few moments, it will run enable cluster S2D. So we will have S2D cluster, right? And let me just open up the IC here. Let me call up the regions. And as you can see, we are probably somewhere like here, region configure cluster or updating. After that, I will create full domains. Uh, and this is like, if you would have more nodes, it would demonstrate to you how to, for example, create, uh, in this case, it's um, different tracks. Okay, with four, oh, this is eight nodes. With eight nodes, you would have 
four racks each of the two uh, machines. This is just an example, right? So this is when you will have uh, eight nodes in the cluster, it will give you an example with uh, rack awareness. If you will have 16, I think what it will do, it will give you example of chassis awareness, like four chassis mm -hmm. with four servers each 16 node cluster, right? So this is just a demonstration. This is not for like a, a real world deployment. You would probably need to modify this to suit you, right? And then it will enable cluster STD finally. So let's take a look here. A cluster where everything is, I guess, done. Oh, it's adding the role now. How do you like it so far? I like it. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't do anything, right? I just pasted the script, and I'm just trying to describe it. I, how it I works, like right? it. I like it. I think it's a bit slow today, right? You have some uh, performance uh, issues. I don't know. Let me just let me just go and open up my task manager just to give you an idea how it's utilizing my machine and it's so funny because it's uh, utilizing all my cores yeah yeah <laughs> to 100 <laughs> so your storage what, normally what do you have in storage an ssd or i have a nvme right this is oh. a laptop right so this this yeah. this is a laptop uh p50 you have p70 I, right or p70 i have a p72 one? yeah P72. I my P50 and I have P53 on the way, but oh, cool. you really want to have some memory. But in this yeah. case, most of the memory is consumed not because of the VMs, because as you can see, the VMs are actually small. Yeah. So these are S2 VMs. So you can see it will fit eight gigs. Ah, it will not fit eight gigs now, but it's, it's actually small, right? Four gigs for DC where I'm running the code from. Log gateway is one gig, and then each machine is like. Uh, depending on the role. So now yeah. enable S2D is being run. So you can see um, it's uh, claiming disks now. And now we'll be able to add it into the into the, here into the Windows Admin Center. So let's add a Windows Server cluster. And let's add, come on, S2D cluster. Oh, what I'm typing, cluster. And will this finish? Ah, gosh, I did one thing because new object was created and I forgot to run the Kerberos delegation again. Ah, now I will need to put uh, my account here. That's crazy, right? I it's forgot, security. Forgot, Microsoft is forgot. always secure. Ah, uh, yes, because this is a uh, double hop, right? Because now yeah. you are providing credentials to another machine, actually from another machine. So I'm now in DC, but I'm connecting to uh, VAC gateway. And this VAC gateway is connecting to my S3 cluster. And the yeah. S3 cluster needs to know that I'm delegating credentials using this VAC gateway. This is actually what was happening. So let me connect with the account to detect that. Come on, access was denied. Study cluster L S1 setup exclamation mark. Come on. Now it should be better. Okay, whatever, save it and add it. So this will be my S2D cluster. Amazing. What's here? Now it will create volumes. I have here script to calculate reserve. So it will create, uh, grab the pool. It will create capacity for HDDs, for SSDs, depending what you have in MediaTek, because this is like for the real world environments where you would have, very, very, where you could have both HDDs and SSDs. And I'm trying to calculate what is the, what is the uh, proper volume size. But actually the volume sizing is bit different uh, it's more complex than just this one right the, the recommendation is to have size of one drive to be empty so you need to create the volumes so if one uh, physical drive will fail it will be that will be placed to rebuild too mm -hmm. however there's also like a recommendation you should not have a, a volume so big because when you do then a recovery it may take forever so uh, the sweet spot can be like five terabytes, six terabytes, something like that. Sometimes ten terabytes. It depends. Yeah, I, so I usually say ten volumes, terabytes right. uh, because people want some space, but not twenty, thirty, forty, and so on. For all the reasons you mentioned. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we yeah, are exactly. nearly so there, the right? Volumes. 
Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we are. Let's take a look in the script. So uh, we are adding missing tiers only for 2016. I, I like the, the tiers and I'm adding here for 2016 servers the tiers that are missing. If you have two nodes, there's also one tier that is uh, missing, which is nested tier, nested, I mean nested resiliency tier. Because then you, when you create uh, nested resiliency volumes, you need to have a tier. But yeah. This script will just add it. Uh, I'll, and then I will create the volumes. So now we are creating the volumes in the script, I guess. Right? Um, and then after that, we will, yeah, this is like VMQ uh, optimization. But I'm explaining here that it's only needed if you don't have the, MMM, the, the dynamic virtual machine multi queue. And then I'm setting up here something. Yeah, I'm setting up here. Unreal Hardware. Uh, start, yeah, start adapter. Yeah, I'm yeah. just making sure that you are starting on a good NUMA node. And yeah, it's and if you have, and depending if you have a hyper threading uh, enabled or not. And this is just for real hardware. And then high performance power prod plan as a real hardware variable you can set, right? If it's real or yeah. not. And then I create some dummy VMs. Uh, you can have also real VMs. So, and if you say I want to have real VMs, it will ask you for ISO file. Of, it will ask you for the VHD, and you can even have like a nested virtualization, and you can have VMs in there, and you can live migrate it. Otherwise, it will just create a blank empty VMs. Cool. Um, it's here now creating volumes. You can see my volume on HDDs number one, and we should be able to see it in here. My volumes are in the inventory. Um, my volumes, my volume on HDD is one, my volume on HDD is two, uh, three way mirror RDFS. And now we can start breaking things. You know, we can start playing with how, what will happen if I will turn off one node? What will happen if I will disconnect one adapter? What will happen if I'll, I don't know, name it. So this way you can get familiar with the uh, uh, S2D clusters with PowerShell with the way I manage it, because I really prefer to do it from one management machine using the PowerShell, uh, but you can do it uh, from Windows Admin Center if you like self-torture, you know, if you like installing features <laughs> uh, server by server or something like that by clicking. Uh, now there is a wizard, right? But um, it depends. I like to have things documented, how it was configured, because if there is a single thing you need to do outside Windows Admin Center, then Windows Admin Center is for me useless. I need to use, I mean, for configuration. For overview, it's super nice and super great yeah. because you yeah. have like everything is green and nice. But for configuring, I need to have one place. For me, currently one place where I can write and configure everything is PowerShell only. Okay, cool. So we are nearly done. Um, and then you can mm -hmm. play with the stuff. Mm -hmm. I see we have still yeah, 84 I mean, yeah. uh, attendees. If there are questions, uh, please ask them. Nice demo, more scripting. Um, one said, uh, thank you, great skill level, very inspiring. We have two PFEs here, so that should work. Microsoft <laughs> Premier Field Engineers, if they don't know. <laughs> um, Deeply impressing, overwhelming. Um, yeah, I think so. It's it's uh, and uh, and Jaromir is not the slowest uh, person on the planet, uh, uh, demoing and talking. Um, so <laughs> like if, you even faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can do faster, I know. Um, so if you, uh, you can understand, this is the guy I, I wanted to hire. So I, I was persuading him for half a year that we have a spot for him and we want to hire him, uh, but the corporate, you know, how it works in corporations, is like he almost gave up and I thought, I was, no, 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 don't give it up. You will join us in, I don't know, half a year or something like that. And he stand with us and now it's paying off. So, yeah, cool. uh, yeah. So, uh, Leider, uh, sorry, some, some people are leaving now because it's a work day, you know. Um, but I, mm -hmm. I will maybe add, um, 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 how you call it if you ask people uh, things online um, a questionnaire if if there is interest mm -hmm. to do uh, maybe a longer a longer session with teams where the people can uh, live ask questions and so on right 
Of course, so, anytime. But I, I anytime. think this is, this is really great, and your Grafana uh, scenario is also very great. You have a lot of nice things there. Even stretch cluster is there um, yes. to play around the, uh, with. When the insider will be when the insider will be released, uh, the, we will we want to release the scenarios. Yeah. We want to release uh, guides. Uh, but as we do this usually in our free time, so yeah. that's why it's not uh, popping up so fast, right? Because yeah. this is more or less like a volunteering. But we yeah, we are all we are all waiting for the insider bits for uh, twenty uh, for the next v, for the next, right? Don't don't name the name yes. twenty something. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes. Yeah, it Look, will I... be probably twenty something. I yeah, it will be twenty yeah, something. It's... Twenty something is good, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So and now it's deploying the VMs. No cluster which machine role, yes. Exactly. They are just a stupid the empty line, ones, yeah. Whatever VMs. Yes, empty yeah. ones. But uh, actually every part, uh, for example, deploying VMs, I tried to describe in, in more details. So for example, if you want to deploy real VMs in your cluster, there is one scenario that is called that is called uh, S2D and uh, through bulk VM creation. Yes, so if you need to create, for example, 20 VMs, you have a customer, yeah. he will ask you, hey, I want to, I want you to install me 20 servers. What you will do, Karsten? And I will if script it, it would be you. you <laughs> Jaromir, don't get me wrong. I, I, I like, Jaromir, don't get me wrong. I like full server installation because of the error, if you have errors in the cluster, but I'm ah, doing a true. lot of error power shots. I do a lot of PowerShell, so uh, don't get me wrong. So, I love. So PowerShell. this is more or less like inspiration for you, right? So when you, so you don't have to figure it out uh, by yourself, right? So, so there are some prerequisites um, that will, you know, create a S2D cluster for you. It will be really fast, and really short, and this is like a super easy. We will just install features and 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 then create a S2D cluster, I think, and then create file share witness super easy this is like a shortcut to your cluster yeah. and then i will create a folder called library on this cluster uh on it will be i guess csv i think yeah csv and i will create volumes for some virtual machines and then i will define my virtual machine as a hash table right so i have my vm01 vm02 with the different parameters Mm -hmm. Right, something I want. Some somewhere I want to have a static IP address. Somewhere I want to have a different VLAN, for example. So, so this is like an example, and and then I create a VMs. I have here an annotant file where you can see that I will be pasting the admin, uh, the machine name, and also I will be pasting here a um, uh, blob. The join blob that will be later created. Okay, so cool. there's a function. There's a function for injecting a static IP address, and then uh, I think I'll, cool. yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll just paste it, and if you'll do it yeah. in WSLAP, you will get a res as a result. You will get three domain joined VMs. However, if you want to, and this is the good thing about WSLAP, you have a known working environment, so you have something to compare it to. So imagine yeah. you are the customer, you are deploying these VMs at his uh, cluster, and you need to tr now troubleshoot that something is not working. And now, you, on the other hand, you will have in your laptop fully working environment where it works. So you can troubleshoot and compare what is supposed to be working and what is not supposed to be working. And this is so important for us, for technicians, to have something that works to see how it should look like when it works to be able to compare it to non-working environment. Mm -hmm. Extremely so, important. So I have a shout out to make for you. Uh, first, uh, really great stuff. And uh, you mentioned most of it you have done in your uh, free time. I uh, I really want to thank minutes, for that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, another, another, uh, another short one, you have also, uh, you can also deploy a virtual machine manager with this scenario. So for all the people who oh. love System Center, this is uh, a good one. Yeah, Yaromir has also virtual machine manager integration and you have this bulk thing where you can do over 100 uh, resources there, right? But so, only so short, awesome. Yaromir, only, just... only short, only short, oh, five minutes. Can we have 10 more minutes? <laughs> 10 more minutes? <laughs> yeah, 10 more minutes, no. but then... Uh, I... people. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they have to work. Okay, show the VMM. <laughs> okay. 
Cool, cool. Thank you. So, um, how you would create it? So, uh, okay, let me just clean up these scripts. These are all the deployment scripts. I should have here, this is creating something. And how about, do I have any more scripts somewhere? Okay, so uh -huh. this is still creating VMs. Okay, anyway, so in general, how would you create a virtual machine manager lab with virtual machine uh, with WS lab? It's easy. In the lab config, you will just say that you want to install SCVMM equals yes. That's first part. The second part is right, and this is this is what you need to do before you uh, do parent images, the second step, create parent disks, right? Because then it will need to create domain controller and then it will uh, see in the lab config that also virtual machine manager should be deployed because it's part of the uh, domain controller. What it will actually do, it will go to tools VHD and it will look for uh, binaries for virtual machine manager. So in the here in virtual machine manager, there will be pre-created folders with you know, ADK, it will say a, copy ADK with ADK setup exe here. So you will put here ADK setup with all of the files. You will also put here ADK Windows PE because there's a text written, put here ADK bin PE with setup here. Put here Watch Machine Manager, right? Put here SQL, it can be 2016 or 2017 or 2019, whatever you want and then uh, update drop for virtual machine manager. After this is here, you can, uh, you can, okay, let me eject it. Eject. Okay, cool. Um, after this is created, then uh, you will run the second step. It will automatically hydrate virtual machine manager. So then deploying virtual machine manager, it's just, you know, you will deploy your lab and virtual machine manager will be already in your domain controller. How amazing is this? And then you can follow some virtual machine manager scenarios like uh, like uh, a bare metal deployment. This is my favorite. You can bare metal deployment, bare metal deploy virtual machines or your S2D nodes in your laptop. And so so funny, so funny cool. to see. Cool. So maybe we will show that uh, at another time <laughs> because okay, that's okay. amazing. That's amazing. Um, uh, someone said I'm very uh, excited about the bare metal uh, deployment, uh, Roland. But we can't Absolutely. show it. We can't show. We can't show it here because we are losing people, and I have also uh, things to do. And I'm pretty sure uh, Vladimir and uh, Jaromir has also have also some time constraints. So I propose we do a, a larger, uh, maybe online session um, later this year if you are up to it. Uh, we can discuss that later, yes, Jaromir yes. and Vladimir. Yeah, and. Um, because we are nearly at uh, one and a half hours now, <laughs> and uh, we have, still we have, we have to, seventy-eight at any so. Yeah, we don't want to lose them all. So, <laughs> so um, we okay, will do okay, a, okay. An, another another event. I know um, you have some YouTube okay. videos there. Yeah, you have a YouTube video and about bare uh, metal. Band. Yeah. So for the people who don't okay. have time and yes. want to to check it, uh, go online. Uh, to YouTube, there is a VS Lab um, um, list it's there. It's AKMS, AKMS, slash WS Lab videos. Like this, cool. WS Lab videos, super easy. So th there you can uh, watch. And uh, uh, <laughs> the last video remembers me that you have all, uh, had uh, a session at uh, CDC last year. And we had even exactly. at the free day, we had a session, right? Okay, cool. Yes. I think we, I think really we have to wrap it up now because I'm, I'm also time constrained. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay, you're thank running you, into thank, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, guys. This was great, uh, uh, and I'm looking forward to do, to do another one uh, with you. I think we will not do a webinar. We will do maybe half a day of uh, Teams or so, and I will invite many people to that if you, if you are up to that. But yeah, we can well. discuss it later. Yeah. Uh, have, let's call it uh, deploying Linux VMs with uh, WS Lab, uh, so Vladimir will be motivated to finish up. The... <laughs> <laughs> and GitHub, <laughs> no, not GitHub, uh, and um, oh. Kubernetes. <laughs> Kubernetes, <laughs> right? Because but I want to also. That's another one, another one, another one. 
<laughs> Maybe let's start with containers, not just the Kubernetes. Let's start slow. <laughs> Okay, no, only just uh, containers. Okay, cool. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, again, it was a great webinar. I enjoyed it uh, very much, and I think the audience also enjoyed it. We have we had uh, a time where we had more than hundred uh, live attendees, and some will also watch the cha the channel. And I will give you the video to put it up in your uh, YouTube uh, channel. So, so last thing, I want to just you, right you have a last link. So, ah, yeah, you clean up everything. Yes, yes, cool. yes. Right click on the cleanup and see, so we'll see. I will open it up and you will see it will ask me, do you want to really clean up your uh, environment, which starts with a prefix like this one? Oh, yeah, I want to. So you will see that uh, machines are disappearing and then the CPU will drop. Hopefully, a little bit <laughs> because I'm yeah, still it, running it, some it, machines. And it will drop and hopefully the and DC then, will not be killed. Yeah. No, the, 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 so this is the DC from the VMM, and this is the one that is being hydrated. So these two other machines are untucked because I was just cleaning up the lab that is uh, that has prefix to this 1217. Yeah, okay. So this is uh, good that it's still there. Okay, guys. Yes. No, I really, I really cut it. Uh, thank you so much for the great webinar. See you soon and uh, stay healthy. Okay. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye. bye.